Welcome Dave uh, to the stage uh, for his talk on using, uh, on, he's the author of Jedi and he's going to show us in his talk how, how to use it effectively. Give a round of applause for Dave. Uh, well, give me a sec. Yeah, that stupid thing won't go away. Uh, well, Dave, just a reminder. We're going to end at uh, about five to three. Um, we're, going to, we're going to try and have five minutes of questions at the end. So as you're, if you're going to leave early, then leave quietly so we can hear what people are asking and hear Dave's answers. All right. Um, so it's really great you're all here. It's great to see so many people, and I'm really thankful for all of you. Um, just quick raise, uh, raise hands, please. Um, who doesn't know Jedi? All right. Who does? All right, and like, that's like 10 persons sleeping or something or dead, <laughs> but whatever. And sorry, my, this thing is going totally nuts. But anyway, um, so I'm, I, I'm Dave, and this is like my CV. I'm, I'm not kidding, this is, re this is really my CV, like I, I would send this to companies and so <laughs> um, it's, it's done on a track point and um, it kind of shows what I, what I love doing and it's, it's like being creative all over and I, I like doing music and like play the guitar, singing and so on and um, there's like two things that are not on there and that's Basically, uh, I started West Coast Swing Dancing and I went to Afghanistan in 2013 because it kind of stops there. So um, what, what happens from 2013 until now is, is I, I did open source development, which is Jedi, basically, and I did. Um, I went to Afghanistan and Afghanistan looked kind of like this. <laughs> so... Um, this is me fighting Taliban or something. And um, I went there and with like an education focus, I teach Afghans. I, I taught Afghans in, in computer science and that kind of stuff. So, but I wanna kind of get away from Star Wars, Star Wars now and um, towards Jedi, the, the, the auto-completion and so I hope everyone understands what autocompletion is here, right? So it's, it's like this thing that pops up when you write code. And so Jedi is, is just autocompletion for Python. And it's, it's kind of a new approach. Like there has been rope before and like there's PyCharm, but, there, but it's kind of different. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a project that has, has grown quite a lot in the, in the last few uh, months even. It, it has like 1,200 2, stars on GitHub and it's, it's well tested and it has only been around for two years, really. Um, so we, we kind of have an emphasis on Python 3 and that's because at least I think it's the future of Python. So. It works in Python too, but still, like um, we 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 do a lot of coding in Python three. Um, so um, then, would it like the base of of Jedi, Like, what what what's really important is to have a good type deduction, and that's not as easy as you might think because. Python is really dynamic. And it's a different approach than PyCharm. PyCharm has this kind of approach where they, or at least I think they have that approach because their code is not open sourced. So, sorry? It is open sourced now, like the whole completion thing. All right, so that has changed. Um, so anyway, what I, what I thought it, it is, is, is like they, they kind of built this 
um, type tree where you, they just know everywhere the types and like they do it this way and I do it on a lazy evalu evaluation approach where I'm, I'm like just moving from place to place and I try to keep all the values as well to have as much information as possible and I can show it, I can show you how I do that and that's, um, this is a small example, it's like this string object down there um, goes like Jedi would now work. It, you have you, all right. So you have this completion here. You have capitalized center and so on, and that kind of needs the string object. It well, it needs to know what the string object is. So it it goes back and looks where where is string object defined. It's like like that get get atter thing. So it does a get atter on the string and the name and executes it. So basically what getatter does, it, it needs the name. So it goes up there, it uh, kind of puts name, the name upper together and then it works. So and that's pretty cool because it's, that's something you wouldn't expect an, an, auto, an auto commission to do. Like, um, so. <laughs> Um, Jedi's, then there's like Jedi's parser, which is fault tolerant. It, it, it basically has to be because autocompletion doesn't really work. Like Rope, the other older autocompletion thing, they kind of use an AST and just delete lines. But that's, then they have to kind of iterate that. And if, if the file is really buggy, they are not able to, to give you any hints. And so basically with Jedi, you can just like give it anything. Like you can give it a PHP script and as long as there's like one Python function there, it will work. Um, <laughs> so way, way more important is the fast parser. That's kind of a strange thing um, that splits up a file into functions and classes. Um, the idea behind it is that, well, you're doing auto-completion all the time and you're only changing like one line. So if you change only one line, you shouldn't be reparsing that whole tree. It's just, it's just a big waste of time. And so what, what Jedi does, it's, it's, it's basically, uh, it's, it's basically to get rid of that and just, just parse that one function again. And sometimes that's buggy, like there's, that's, that's why people sometimes think Jedi is not really good or it's, it's buggy or whatever. So if you find a, a way to reprodu reproduce issues, like we would be really happy. Um, and there's like one fun thing about this is like, if you have Japanese guys as contributors, they will, they will fix that. Like they're the most awesome people to to have around uh, an open source project because they always they always kind of go for performance and and fix things and so that has happened a few times uh, here in Jedi as well. Um, then the the dynamic um, nature of Python is, is like we understand that by by doing. Um, well, by, by, by basically understanding all the get atter stuff and, and so on, but that doesn't really help a lot because you're not using that. The, the biggest issue actually of, of, of dynamic stuff in Python is, is lists and sets because you push into these kind of containers and you expect something out of it. And it's hard to understand it because you push from somewhere and it kind of the auto-completion has to handle it, um, which is, as far as I know, again, um, not handled by PyCharm, PyDef, and Rope, and so on. Um, so this is an example, like you just, kind of Jedi understands it even if it's in a for loop or like in a different function. Um, so you have an, an X that is defined as an array, you, you push two times, and you kind of, in the end, you end up with completions for both int and string. Like you could now say, well, but the index is not right, like it should just be an int, 
Well, we might work on that, but I don't think it's very important because typically you only have one type in there, but you need to know that one type. And so what we end up with is, is um, Cheddar, Cheddar really understands a lot about Python. So this, this was kind of the introduction uh, towards static analysis because like, if you don't understand all those things, like decorators, generators, list comprehensions, and so, and so on, like if you fail to understand just one bit, one statement, then you fail to understand the whole kind of thing because Jedi is recursive and like goes from one place to the next. So if you don't understand the list comprehension, you cannot know the type in the end. Um, Jedi even understands descriptors like that under, like almost nobody understands those because they're pretty complicated. Um, there's, uh, there's like exceptions that we just from the beginning on said, well, we, we're not, we're not going to do that. And that's meta classes, set, etcher, and I think a few others like locals and globals modifications and dict modifications and like that crazy stuff, um, which is just too hard to understand. Um, so this led to the idea of, of creating a linter or static analysis. And so this, this came up when I, I was writing a proposal for EuroPython in February or something. And so I was like, oh, autocompletion is not going to be that interesting to, to talk about. Like, it's just autocompletion. Everybody wants it, but nobody really cares how it's done. And so um, I kind of thought, well, static analysis could be really nice to do with Jedi because we understand the types and we can just do um, lazy ev evaluation on everything. So basically evaluate everything. So you push, well, sorry, uh, we, you push the lazy away. And first I thought it was slow, but it turns out it's not that slow. It's not as fast as PyLint or PyFlakes, but it's, it's okay. Like I will show you the results afterwards. Um, and it yields very good results. Just like I, I worked on it for a month or so, and that's not a lot of time. Like uh, I, in comparison to what I worked on Jedi in general, it's it's been like more than two years, so it's just a month. Um, and then it was really fun because there was a talk. Like who has seen the the, the Haskell keynote? So, and this was fun for me because. He just said static analysis is primitive, and I'm sitting in there and having a talk about static analysis and how, how we will do that in the future in Python. And so, like he says, well, that's not going to do it. And there's like uh, PyLint compile, like the Python compiler, and so on, and they suck, whatever. Um, and so, Jedi, well, it does it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, yeah, Bazinga. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, it, but we have to be fair. There's like, um, it, it wasn't really working on Monday because like, <laughs> <laughs> I worked on different stuff. I, I worked most of all on attribute error, uh, on attribute, attribute errors and type errors from function where you would call like a function with too few arguments or whatever. But um, so still, like I hacked it together in two days, and I still drank beer and like so. <laughs> there's <laughs> it didn't take a lot of time. And so we will work, we will definitely work on that, like to have a, a proper, uh, proper uh, type errors for all that kind of cases. Um, and here, here is what I worked, what I worked on. Like th this is the slide that I wanted to start with originally, but then like I, ch I kind of changed it. And so. This is what Pi, what what Jedi really does well. It, it's like oh, we have str dot upper and 
well, we forget a P or something, and then it kind of reports it to us. The same for like a function that is called with, with like an argument, uh, with like three arguments instead of two. Like that kind of stuff uh, is, is working really well now. And that's, that was my focus in that kind of, in that month before EuroPython. Um, which is which is pretty cool because um, this is not like this is a very simple example. It, it works on like cr pretty crazy stuff. I, I I cannot really show the examples because it's just like very long Python code and then like. But you can just take the example from before with get atcher and like play around with it and it will still find some uh, some error. Um, so we, we I, will, I will just give, give you an example. I, I, like, I thought, well, I don't really have time to test, to test against all the libraries or whatever, but I, I, I just, like a week ago or so, preparing the talk, I thought, well, I could just take the most well-known library that probably doesn't have any bugs. And uh, so I took request, which, which is like 4,000 lines, like urlib3 is not included here. Um, and like scanning it takes 15 seconds, it, it yields 51 errors, and like 22 errors of those are errors that you want, like it's compatibility code, like imports from, I don't know, like Python 2 imports, uh, because I scan it in Python 3, um, and so that kind of stuff. And so that's fine if, if you see those errors, and there's like a few bugs, and pretty much everything else is related to mixing class classes. Now, mixing classes is something that I didn't even think about before, but mixing classes in, in Jedi is gonna be kind of hard to understand because you, you have this mixing class and the attribute is defined in a class that is different than, it, than the one it's, called, uh, it's used in. And so that's kind of special, but we might work around it. Um, I don't know, but it's pretty cool. Like um, you get 50 errors, or like, let's let's say you get 22 errors. That's not a lot of false positives. And to show you that you still get errors if there's a, a mistake, I kind of prepared this now. No, I didn't prepare this, but <laughs> so if my presentation would close, but yeah. So, I don't see it on my screen, so I have to find it. So, we can just, like, first let's, let's just scan it. Sorry, it's very small. I forgot to change the size. Um, so, scanning it takes, like, a few seconds. This mo module, and doesn't yield an error. We change something like this here, time c time dot encode, remove something. Um, so we have an, uh, an error now, right? Like, you, it, it really, uh, so it's not just a joke, it, it works. <laughs> um, my old yeah, you can, but that, it's the worst thing ever. Like, like <laughs> it's even worse than NumPy, I think, because Jedi is just so comp. Like, the whole idea of of um, running Jedi on Jedi is is basically that you run recursions on recursions, and that's very complicated to understand. But it works. Like uh, Jedi does uh, kind of um, a limitation in recur recursions where like, oh, if you're like 10 levels deep, just ignore the rest and like, because you cannot, you cannot follow everything. There's just no time for that in autocompletion. We might change that for static analysis, but yeah. Um, so let's just do one other. Yeah, let's just do another one. What, what did I change? I don't know. Let's just then change this function. I hope it works. <laughs> yeah, like we, we get some errors and like you can also, like now you would also get PyFlakes also yields errors down there. 
So let's undo it. Um, let's remove this parameter. Um, so apart from that username thing that is not there, you will not see an error, but let's see the output, output here. So it will tell you more because it will tell you, well, yeah, the username is not defined like Py, PyFlakes does. Um, but it then, then also tells you kind of in a, in a typical Python way, oh, basic auth string takes exactly one argument, but two are given. And, and that's pretty nice. I would like to, but we're, I'm done now with that. <laughs> uh, so, um, I want to finish here. Uh, so, what are we going to do in the future? Why is that not working? Yeah, LibreOffice for the win. So, um, we, we will improve static analysis. That's one of our goals now for like the, le the next uh, few uh, weeks at least. And then there's like the goal of adoption in mainstream IDs, which is already ongoing, like Spider is, is doing it, it with a guy called Steven Sylvester. And there's uh, PyDev is interested. And so one of the things we're going to do if we have enough manpower is refactoring. Um, and then there's um, one thing I'm really excited about. Um, it's the integration of Sebastian Kraft's Python type annotator, which adds kind of a way to understand NumPy and, and built-in types way better. He, he kind of runs um, a, a test suite and hacks the Python interpreter to kind of leak every input-output uh, type and name, so you kind of know uh, what goes in and what comes out in built-in libraries. So that's going to be at Euro Python Sprints. We're going to do that. We're at least three people. So if, if you'd like to join, you're very welcome. Um, and there's like my small future. Uh, I've, been, I've been working it, on it for quite a long time now. Um, it, it starts to get financially unsustainable uh, because it's just my savings there vanishing. <laughs> um, but if you're a company and like you, you want to have really good static analysis, well, maybe you want to hire me or something. <laughs> and yeah, alternatives are either Kickstarter or more Japanese guys. So, <laughs> and yeah. So here's my contacts. Um, there's two things I want to say. The first is like test well and often. There's um, talks, pi test, coverage pi, and like for open source stuff, there's also Travis, um, which are just awesome tools. And if you have like like a library that that has a, a big test coverage, that's just really cool. Um, and create libraries if they don't exist. So that's that's really the strength of the of the Python ecosystem. If you ever thought um, something should be better, change it. Um, so yeah, we might have time for a question, but probably not. We have, so. Thank you very much, <laughs> Dave. Very interesting. Thank you. We've got time for one question, I should think. <laughs> Oh, uh, can you repeat the question, uh, Dave? Yeah. So he said he asked, "What? How well would it work with Vim?" And Vim, uh, like I wrote an, a plugin for Vim called Jedi Vim, which is working pretty well. And there's another plugin called um, You Complete Me, which is using Jedi. Um, so they are working really well. There's like three plugins for Emacs. There's two plugins for Sublime. There's plugins for a lot of editors. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it. So um, go ahead. Go ahead. have a good time. Thank you for coming. Uh, remember, Afghanistan is beautiful and like. <laughs> Thank you, Dave.